a cut loss? Or should I continue to hold on to my positions? Oh my gosh. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking these questions in your head. Whether should you cut loss during a bear market, during a market crash, or should you continue holding on to it? Now, stock markets and cryptocurrency markets, they crash on and off. You have your bull markets and then you have your bear markets where they drop and then you need to wait a while before the market recovers and then you have another leg of a bull run. Now for the past decade, the stock market has been going on the longest bull run ever until it started to crash because of the Russian-Ukraine war causing tensions here and there. Then you have inflation and interest rate highs contributing to a further decline in stock markets globally. Then for the cryptocurrency markets, while crypto has been following the direction of the stock market thus far, so cryptos have also been declining. So what should you do when the market is crashing and on a decline? Should you cut loss? or patiently hold on to your positions. Now, there is no right or wrong answer. It really depends on your own beliefs and your investment style and time frame. But there are some considerations that you should make that will help you in making your ultimate decision to cut loss or hold on. Now, before we go further, I'm Jessica Sin. I talk about personal finance and investing in stocks or cryptocurrencies or real estate. So if you like these topics on how to grow your income and wealth and retire early, then follow me, subscribe to my channel and like this video. All right, let's go. Okay, so first off, you are not alone when dealing with this question of cutting losses or holding on. Now, in order to make money in financial markets, not only you have to make the prediction of a right direction, you also have to have good timing, able to buy in or sell off at the right time. So that would make you a lot of money. But of course, it is very hard for us to try to time the market, even professionals also. We can use data to back us up, we can do our own analysis, but nobody can really predict the future. So of course, there will be some risk when you do invest in either stocks or cryptocurrencies. Now, what can you do during a market crash? So we talk about stop losses first. Now, depending on whether you're a trader or investor, traders, they do not hold on to their positions for very long. So sometimes they will set a stop loss target and once it is hit, then they will just exit the market completely. For example, let's say a person buys stock Tesla and then he enters at this price and then he set a stop loss target at 10% below his entry price. So if the market crashes and the price reaches the stop loss target, recording a 10% loss, then he will exit his position. He won't continue to hold on to it further. He won't wait until the price has rebounded again. So this is the type of trader where he trades for the short term and gets out whenever his stop loss is being hit. Now, depending on whether you're a trader or investor, an investor would hold on to the position, perhaps, if there are reasons enough to justify holding on to the position. In fact, an investor may even add on to the existing position if the price drops further. However, not every case warrants that you actually add on to your positions. It really depends on the type of asset that you are holding. So let's look further into it. Now let us talk about the stock market, which is not as risky as cryptocurrency market. So when it comes to cryptocurrencies, most people actually trade them. Some do hold cryptos for the longer term. But in this case, let us talk about stocks first, okay? So when it comes to stocks, now if you are buying US stocks, we can see that the US stock market tends to go up over time. If you look at the chart from decades ago, the US stock market, S&P 500, has been on an upward trend, and especially so in the past decade. It has climbed really fast. Now, what you should do when you look at your portfolio Yes, acknowledge that the US stock market always recovers after every crash and in the long run, it goes up. 
But if you are not holding the index in your portfolio, if you're not holding to any index fund, you're not holding to the broad ETF, but you are investing in individual US stocks, then you need to acknowledge that not all stocks will actually recover to their all-time highs, to their glory days. It may be over. The same applies to cryptocurrencies as well. Not all cryptocurrencies, not all the coins out there will survive. In fact, in every market cycle for crypto, some coins will just die off completely. You will not hear of their name anymore. So you need to acknowledge that there are some that you may just need to cut off completely before you lose all your money. It applies for both stocks and crypto. Now for stocks, let us look at the tech bubble bursting in the 2000s. So during that time, we have the dot-com bubble boom and then the bust afterwards. So some companies failed while some survived and managed to hit their glory days. So those that failed include pets.com. And those that survive and continue to grow greatly include Amazon, which most of you have heard because it is such a large e-commerce platform that American shoppers buy their things on. So you could be holding a pets.com stock or you could be holding an Amazon stock. Now, whether you want to cut loss or not, you really need to look at the fundamentals of the stock. Do you think this stock, the company itself behind the stock, is able to survive the market crash, right? In every market crash, some companies, some coins will be wiped out. So you need to analyze that position itself. Think, what industry is this company in? Does the industry have attractive growth prospects? What about the company itself? Can it still grow? Is it financially healthy? Does it have enough cash balance to tide it through when things get tougher? Does it have a lot of debts on its balance sheet? Is its revenue growing? Is it profitable? Is it burning cash? How sustainable are the business operations? Is the industry really competitive? It is not a one-size-fits-all basis whereby, oh, the stock market always recovers so I can just let my portfolio sit there and not do anything. No, if you're holding individual positions, you need to assess them individually. Now, you need to have reasons to sell a stock. So, for example, perhaps you think that the industry is no longer growing as fast as it used to. The prospects are decreasing and perhaps the company's position in the industry is also declining because there are more competitors coming out. And also perhaps the macroeconomic environment is not favorable for that kind of industry. So perhaps you might want to exceed that position and then look at investing back if situation improves, if the macroeconomic outlook improves, or you may just want to exit that position completely and not look back if the industry is really declining itself. Also look at the company's own fundamentals, as I have mentioned, look at the financial position and also how it is performing versus its competitors and whether it has any more growth prospects, whether the management is spending the company's capital wisely in a financial way. Now, don't be afraid to cut your losses. Don't give in to the sunk cost fallacy. So some people may think that, oh, I have spent so much time researching on this stock and spent so much money. I might as well just hold on to this stock and hope that over time it will go up again. And I won't have to actually realize these losses that I'm seeing now in my portfolio. Now I'm seeing a 50% drop, but maybe if I hold on to it for five more years, it will recover. So I don't have to take this 50% loss. I don't want to give into that. I don't want to have the feeling of losing money now. Let me just hold on to that hope. But of course, not all hope will rescue your portfolio. You need to know when to exceed, when to cut your losses. For example, Warren Buffett himself, which is a very famous US investor that has made a lot of wealth through investing in the stock market, he dared to cut his losses. So during the global COVID-19 pandemic in 20 
exceeded all his U.S. airline positions, cut his losses, and then moved on instead of just holding on to them and hoping that the travel industry will recover and he will continue to make good money on those airline stocks. He knew that the airline industry is declining. The airline industry itself is already very capital intensive to begin with. It needs a lot of money to purchase an airplane and maintain it and to finance the operations of an airline, of an airplane. So in itself, it is already not that attractive of an industry to invest in. And more so, you come to a period of the pandemic where, yeah, over time, people are not that afraid to travel anymore. Travel industry is picking up again, but the industry itself is still not attractive. So Warren Buffett felt that it was time to move on, just cut your losses, and then replow whatever remaining money you have into other investments that can make you more money in the long run, that can compound in value further over the years. So he replowed the money by investing in healthcare stocks, which rose because of the pandemic. So you have to make decisions like this to cut your losses, move on, replow your money elsewhere into opportunities that can grow your portfolio. Now, whether you want to add more to your existing position, you have to ask yourself this question. So now you're seeing a 30% or 50% loss on the current stock position that you're holding on to. At this discounted price, will you still buy more of it? Does it seem more attractive to you now that it is trading at a much cheaper price than your initial entry price? If you think that it's attractive now, then you can add on to it dollar cost average. You just purchase a bit of the stock every month, no matter the price, and then over time, hopefully, you will be on an uptrend, considering that the stock has good fundamentals. Now, if you look at the price now, it is trading at such a cheap price, at a discount, and yet you still feel like, uh, I'm not sure, maybe it's not really worth it, then perhaps you might want to consider selling that stock because you don't really believe in it, even though it is already trading at a cheaper price. You still don't think it is attractive enough for you to pick it up. So that may be a sign that you should exit that position, cut your losses and move on. Of course, there may be no right or wrong answer. It really depends on your conviction, your research, your analysis, and what is better for your overall portfolio depending on your investment time frame and your own investment goals. Now, if you see there are better opportunities for you to replow your money elsewhere, then you can consider cutting your existing positions, sell them off. For example, like the Warren Buffett example I used earlier, he replowed the money from the airline stocks into the healthcare industry by buying stocks like Pfizer during the global COVID-19 pandemic and he managed to make money, although he cut the losses from the airline stocks. Perhaps you might want to replow your money, cut your losses in some existing positions, and then replow that money into sectors that you think will perform well in the existing macroeconomic environment. So if there is a bear market, a recession, then typically consumer defensive stocks, consumer staples will perform better and during inflationary periods, it will be energy sector companies that will perform better because commodities tend to increase when prices in the overall economy increase as well. So this tactic would be more of a sectoral rotation approach whereby you rotate your money across different sectors depending on the state of the economy. So if you would like to learn more about this sectoral rotation approach when it comes to investing, do reach out to me. I teach about stocks investing, whether you are investing in stocks or exchange traded funds, ETFs. So a good advice would just be to diversify no matter what. Even if we're having a bull market anytime soon, you have a recovery anytime soon, do diversify. Don't put all your money into one stock or one cryptocurrency. Diversify, spread it across different asset classes. 
You have stocks, spread it across different sectors, cryptocurrencies, spread it across different coins. You can also have both stocks and cryptocurrencies, not just one alone, or you can even have some commodities in your portfolio. So, and even some properties. So if you're requiring any assistance on how to manage your portfolio, you want to learn more about investing in whether stocks, cryptocurrencies, real estate or commodities, just reach out to me because I teach about investing. So look at the description section below. There are some helpful links if you're getting started or if you want to learn more. You can also subscribe to my Patreon whereby I post market updates, my thoughts and analysis on the stock market or so the cryptocurrency market, whichever coins and stocks I'm following. So do check it out. And thank you for watching. I will see you in my next video. Also let me know in the comments whether you are cutting your losses or you are the type where you will hold on to them and actually dollar cost average. So let me know what is your approach and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.